Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. As we are succeeding from one of the biggest pandemic that we have ever seen, I wish this year should turn to be the year of opportunities. And I seriously wish that every one of us should get an opportunity to grow at least one step better than where we are now so that our knowledge, our profession, our happiness improves. With this, I would like to take you to the today's video which is who is piping design engineers and what do they actually do what are the roles and responsibilities of piping design engineers and i am subhash chandran so let's get into the video we should understand this before pursuing any career it could be of anything but at least before taking up as a career we should understand one important thing which is know about the role we must know what we are going to do in that profession and what is that profession is all about what are the roles and responsibilities of that profession that you are going to perform being in that position so this is one of the important thing that one should actually strive to know before pursuing it as a profession you know why it is very important it is important for a specific reason the reason is it creates a passion if you don't have a passion then you will not be able to grow in that profession it is really important to understand about the role to create a passion because passion comes when you are involved when you're not involved you will not have the passion that's because if you look at the successful people you will be able to understand that being successful is nothing but being passionate so if one is passionate about anything that he does probably it is easy for him to succeed in that profession if you're not passionate then there is no meaning in talking about it without passion you may not be able to make a big lead in your life you may be able to survive but you significantly uh, may not be doing something that you wanted to do you may just perform an average life and average professional career but if you have a passion in the role then probably that no one can stop you you can go to a different level so for now let's get into the video this video will be helpful for two categories of people the first category is confused category these are engineers working in piping design who are not in a position to see beyond their boundaries given by the organization this could be because of uh, various uh, organizational pressure or work pressure or uh, the constraints in the organization that one is not in a position to see what is there on the other side and the second category of people think that uh, piping designing is only about pipe routing this also happens because of the same reason that because these are set of engineers given one activity throughout the entire year to do it so this has become their repeated daily activities and they got frustrated so they are not in a position to confidently say that no no we also does another ro other role in piping design so this is these are two categories of people but if you really look at pipe routing pipe routing is nothing but arranging the piping in such a way that it is some operations it is the process uh, the condition so that the the process plan can be operable and it could be uh, safe for uh, working professionals who are working in the plant and it is uh, it could be a long lasting plant uh, which can sustain for more number of years so this is all about the pipe routing but piping design engineers has much more bigger responsibilities that is what we are going to see in this video so let's understand the roles and responsibilities with an example we must understand that in any given project to a company or any organization or an employee they have to deliver and especially in engineering projects these are known as engineering packages but the engineering packages consist not only one documents it consists of several documents especially in piping design engineering the engineering package consists of an engineering report plot plan piping gas piping isometrics and piping empty wood and several other documents which are necessary to be delivered along with the engineering packages that's why piping design engineers has to perform a diversified role in the project please note that the actions that i'm going to show you down the slides could be either sequential or could be parallel that's because in a project generally we do certain things in sequential and certain things in parallel and we cannot say which activities has to go in sequence and it is basically upon the need of the project and the timeline of the project so the sequence number that i am going to indicate need not to be in the same order 
This video is basically to give you an overall understanding about what a piping design engineer basically does in his project. This involves 18 steps and it starts from step 1 scope identification. Scope identification is nothing but the design engineer has to go through the documents received from clients to understand the scope of piping. It is basically to identify the number of lines involved in the project. So design engineers list down all the number of lines that are involved in the project so that they can estimate the magnitude of the piping work in the project. Moving on to the second stage is an input collection. This is a stage where engineers collect as many inputs as possible to start the piping work. Basically, this involves collecting PNID, uh, piping class and reference standards and uh, existing uh, available drawings and any project specification which are available with the clients. Next stage is prepare conceptual design. Conceptual design is nothing but planning things based on fundamentals and importance for detail engineering will not be given in this stage because the accuracy of dimension is not that necessary at this stage of conceptual design. Basically here this stage the preliminary designs are developed to understand whether all the lines and all the equipments are placed uh, to check the space utilization is planned in proper way or not. Moving on to the next step is the coordinations with other disciplines. In any project design engineers has to coordinate with various other disciplines to get inputs for their discipline. So it is one of the important responsibility for any design engineer to perform the proper coordination to collect the inputs on time. The next level is continuous follow up to collect the latest inputs. So here you have to keep on communicating with other disciplines to collect your inputs. That's because most of the other disciplines may not be in a position to give you inputs on the same day of your request. So it's your responsibility to ensure that you have received your inputs to start your piping work. Let's move on to the step 6 which is basically review vendor drawings. In, pro in any projects you may receive you may have to review a lot of drawings such as pressure vessel drawings, valve drawings, strainer drawings. So it is one of an important activity for a design engineer to review the drawings so that you can interpret the inputs that can be used for your piping detail engineering or developing the piping layouts. And the next step is step number 7 which is basically you have to initiate the parallel activity uh, of a drawing preparation. You know why this is what I've said you in the beginning of the uh, um, uh, presentation. Like certain activities are sequential, certain activities are parallel. So drawing preparation is one such activity that has to be started at the very beginning stage of the project. So it has to be um, in this way actually. You uh, uh, develop a drawing so that when and where you receive an input from other disciplines, you keep on incorporating into your drawings and keep improving your drawings and keep uh, uh, correcting your drawing to a better shape. So this is a parallel activity. It should not be stopped for any other reason. This has to be continued right from the start to the end of the project. And the next level is guide designers because when you are preparing a drawings basically designers are the one who develops the drawing so you have to give them your idea and your thoughts and you have your requirements or if they are stuck with any technical requirements so you have to guide them to ensure that the work is progressing and the next point is validate the design once the designer confirms the design, uh, being a design engineer, you have to ensure that the design is uh, meeting your requirements and design is meeting the client requirements, meeting the project specification. So this is basically where you ensure all the pipe routings are perfect enough to uh, say that the design is safe and operable and has uh, uh, accessibility and maintenance requirements. So basically here you have to validate the design is appropriate or not. Moving on to the 10th step which is basically a clash interference. See clash uh, interference is nothing but checking the piping clash with other elements like structures, electrical cables, instrumentation cables or underground um, civil foundations. So basically you have to check your piping is clashing with any other disciplines or not. Uh, it could be done either in 3D model because three, in 3D model you will be able to um, visibly visualize and uh, see the clashes. Uh, in, uh, even it could be done in 2D with uh, much more interpretations of uh, 2D drawings. So this is one of the uh, important step because clashing is going to delay the construction if it is found during the construction stage. And moving on to the step 11 which is basically 
Once after uh, finalizing the design, you have to present and justify your design with your clients because clients are the one who is going to use your design uh, and they are going to construct that design, um, construct the design with the drawings that you are supplying. So basically, the clients may come out with lots of questions and um, comments and you have to uh, respond to them and justify them and ensure that the client requirements are met. If your uh, design uh, has is meeting the requirements of the client perfectly, there, is, there will not be any problem. So this is one of the important stage um, uh, in, a, in any project, irrespective of which project you are working, you have to present your design in front of a client. And the next stage is incorporate the comments that are received during your presentation like uh, clients or your senior uh, engineers who are reviewing the design may give you a lot of comments about uh, your design so uh, you have to make a note of all the comments and make sure that all the comments are incorporated and the next step is produce final drawings once all the comments are uh, done which means that once you're um, sure that uh, your uh, the, all the comments are taken care in your drawings uh, and your um, uh, drawings are updated uh, i mean uh, not the drawings i mean uh, the your preliminary drawings are updated then you can proceed for the final drawing final drawings is something like the it should have a more accuracy accuracy in terms of specification in terms of dimension in terms of quality of the text in terms of the aesthetic look of the layout everything has to be in a perfect shape so that is what we mean as a final drawing and now moving on to the 14th step and once the final drawing is prepared, again this has to be reviewed internally, internally for various uh, reasons because there could be a uh, text error, there could be uh, a drafting error, there could be uh, a numbering error, so there could be many other things, a drawing number sequence is one of the common error that we can find in the project. So reviewing drawings is one of the important stage and moving on to the 15th step and ensure uh, once you review the drawing, you will have your own comments, your uh, prior peers will have your own comments, there will be a quality check, quality check comments will be there, so you have to incorporate all the comments and make sure that all the comments are taken care and captured properly. Moving on to the 16th step, which is basically a preparation of a report. As I said in the beginning of the uh, presentation that uh, engineering package, which means that it also includes a report. So you have to prepare an engineering report. Engineering report is something that you summarize your uh, activities and you summarize your scope and you list down all the drawings and uh, documents that are uh, delivered with respect to the scope which are identified in the um, your project scope. So basically you have to relate the scope and the drawings and documents delivered so to justify that your package is in an appropriate shape. Moving on to the 17th step which is basically assembling all the documents and drawings as one package because as a delivery you have to uh, issue as a one package. So a package should have some sort of a, a sequential process basically a, um, the person who is going through the documents should understand the flow actually. So if you don't keep the drawings in proper sequence or proper order, say for an example there must be a continuation between 10 drawings. If you swap the drawings there won't be any continuation. It may be tough for a person to check the number and to find the appropriate drawing in the whole bunch of 1000 drawings. So it is a responsibility for a piping design engineer to ensure that all the documents and drawings are assembled in sequentially uh, as a one package. And then finally moving on to the 18th step which is basically a final submission. See final submission this may not be a bigger activity but there are some certain sequence followed in certain organizations you have to um, fill up a lot of uh, documents there must be a procedure that the client accept your package in certain way so one has to go through these procedures it is one of the important responsibility for a piping design engineer to comply with all the norms and rules and regulations that are set by clients pertaining to a project because certain clients gives more value for a procedure so if you don't follow a procedure uh, clients may not be happy so it is really important to follow the procedure and understand the rules and conditions that are put in place uh, so that you can submit your final submission in a proper way i hope this video will be useful for you thank you so much for listening to me and thank you so much for your support because i could see lots of uh, subscriptions and uh, views and also for the new viewers and i would request that if you're not subscribed and please subscribe to my channel and uh, if you like this video uh, give me a like and because uh, that gives me a motivation and uh, i really um, uh, thanks for all the supporters and who are watching my videos uh, i will try to uh, put more videos and i'll make sure that i share my knowledge with you so that you and me can grow together